Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to my build video of Taycom's US Armored Jeep. This is their up armored version of the quarter ton Willys Jeep. So this kit came out in 2019 or 2020 and this is the up armored version and it's based on some samples found in the Ardennes. In this case, this is uh, found with the 82nd Airborne in Le Glaze, I believe. So this kit is uh, pretty nice, the, the sprues are pretty crisp, uh, nice grey plastic, about maybe 150-160 parts in this kit. Like all soft skin vehicles, we're going to start off with the chassis, uh, so we're going to start working on the axles. Now of course I have not shown any the clean up and I will kind of make note of clean up in this kit, even though this is a very recent release, there is a lot of clean up, there's quite a bit of flashing and heavy seam lines that do require a lot of cleanup. So it's a bit strange on such a new kit to see that this level of flashing and, and heavy seams. It's not really um, enough to throw me off the kit, but it's just something to be aware of. So now we're working on the leaf suspension and this is actually a pretty involved step. We're gonna spend most of our time actually working on the suspension and the engine. And it is very well detailed. I have to give them full props for this. Um, it's a bit fiddly. Um, the plastic's a bit springy, so it has a tendency to kind of bounce all over the place. So now we have the two axle assemblies uh, mounted onto the chassis. Another thing is that the steering is actually fixed, so you can't model this workable, unfortunately. Also, we have some very nice little photo etch pins here for the tow hitch, and just fixing in place with a little bit of liquid CA. So now we're moving on to the engine, and this actually is a full engine in itself. It's quite a few um, parts of it. If anything, most of the, the sprues contain parts of the engine. And we're not going to see any of this because I'm going to have obviously the, the hood or the bonnet of this uh, Jeep closed. But you can see it's a pretty involved um, engine assembly. However, um, it does go together very well and the instructions are quite clear. I have to give them full uh, props. I'm currently working on uh, a dragon kit on the side, which we'll have a video in a few weeks. And I've forgotten what Nightmare's dragon instructions are. So that's our engine assembly finally put together. This is probably the most involved step of the entire build and we're never going to see any of this detail. However though, it is a very, very well detailed little engine. So now we're going to add some of the other fittings. So this is the steering column for the steering wheel. And 
And now we're going to start mounting the engine to the chassis. So again, just a little bit of extra tin and then just some careful alignment to make sure everything lines up and engages with its locating pegs. And there we have the undercarriage ready to go. Now moving on to the cap. So we just have to remove some of the mounting brackets for the tarp or the tarpaulin. So this version doesn't have that. So we're just going to snip them away and just um, scribe back any of the burring. So be a little bit careful drilling holes into the, the cab, especially the, the large ones in the rear of the, the cab. They are not going to be filled. Um, so if you put the, um, the, the large uh, holes back for the mounting of the 50 cal on the normal Jeep or the 30 cal, so we're going to have to come back and fill that later on or just hide it under stowage. So moving on to the radiator and the uh, mud grill or mud uh, fenders. So again, this is a pretty nice little one piece assembly. Pretty delicate too, like this plastic again, it's quite soft. So you have to be a little bit careful handling it. It is very easy to bend it out of, um, bend it out of alignment if you're not careful. So now we're going to start mounting the, the fender and cab to the uh, upper chassis. And now I'm just going to switch to some Revell Contact. I just want a nice slow setting glue so I have time to work and align things. And I'm just going to slide the cab on into place. And everything actually fits fairly well, like there's no real um, nasty um, fit issues here. So I've already painted the radiator black. I would recommend that you leave this piece off entirely and leave the, the hood separate. I glued mine in place and now it's going to be very difficult to mask that if at all. So I would recommend leaving the radiator separate and the hood off, paint it separately and then glue everything in place when you're doing your final assembly after painting and weathering. The cab details are very nice. We have a full, fully detailed uh, fuel tank that the driver bravely sits on top of. So good luck to him if he goes over a mine. And again, just a little bit of test fitting, just to make sure everything comes together. And then just taking a little bit of Tamiya Extra 10, we're just gonna lock everything in place. And we do get a little bit of photo etch, just taking a little bit of liquid, liquid CA glue. I'm just going to mount this bracket here to the rear of the fuel tank. And I'm just going to mount the big pentel mount for the 50 cal that looks absolutely massive on such a small vehicle. Um, that's one thing I kind of like about the look of the, the Jeeps with 50s. It really does make the, the 50 look absolutely mean. So now I'm going to mount the uh, the seats in. So these are a little fiddly. It's quite a busy little interior. So again, just uh, taking your time to make sure things line up correctly before uh, the glue sets is important. So 
So now mounting the uh, Pioneer tools. So we'll just get a, a simple axe and shovel assembly here. They're pretty well detailed. The, the bracket detail is pretty nice. There's no uh, molded on proper kind of straps or tie downs. So you could add them if you so wish. Um, in this case, I'm just going to mount them out of the box. So we get this very big photo etch plate, which is the armored plate for the cap. And I just bent that using um, a pair of long nose pliers and just kind of test fitted everything to ensure that it fits. And I've also just given the uh, photo etch brass just a very light sanding just to help paint it dear to it later on. And I'm just gonna take some liquid CA glue and we're gonna mount this in place. So moving on to the uh, M2 HB or the 50 cal Madus. Um, so the 0.5 on this is actually very well detailed. I'm pretty impressed by it. And it kind of captures just how beefy these machine guns actually are. Anyone who's been around a 50 cal or a 0.5 machine gun um, will tell you that these things are monsters. I I've been on the ranges with these things before and they are no joke. Um, there's one little thing that's missing, and I wonder if any of you noticed it yet. I I'll tell you in a moment, but there is a pretty glare glaring thing that either snapped off or just was not uh, included. And if you haven't copped it, it's the cocking handle. So the plate for the cocking handle is, is, is actually there, but the actual handle itself is missing. I think I might have snapped it off because it's actually molded in place. And there we have our armored Jeep ready to go. Pretty nicely detailed. I do have a bit of super glue marks I have to come in and remove later on. But uh, in all, it was actually a pretty uh, interesting and fun little build. It took me about maybe uh, two or three days um, over a few evenings to, to build. Um, I've left the wheels separate, so that's why they're not really aligned. They're just uh, um, blue tacked in place. So do join me in a few weeks when we come back to paint and weather this. And we're going to be doing a cool little whitewash finish on this model. So guys, I've been Shane. I hope you enjoy this um, interesting take on the Willys Jeep and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Take care and bye bye.